Hello friends, it's Annette from Stampin' with the Bees. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I wanted to come to you today with a split card featuring the True Love Designer Series paper. And I'm just going to show you some of the paper here first before we get started. I've cut into it quite a bit so I don't have a ton. One side is geometrics and the other side is kind of like a floral. It's very pretty. Um, it's all black and white, which I love. Um, and this one here is the one I fussy cut the flowers out of for today's card. And there's the final one. It's the teeniest piece. It's the one I use the most. I love these stripes. Um, so I'm going to start with a white card base. And I have a flower that I've cut out of the DSP. <gasps> okay, we're going to need that. All right, and I would thought I would start. Sorry daughter interrupt us. Um, I thought I would start by coloring the flower and I'm going to put a piece of um, scratch paper underneath because when you color, I'm going to color with the um, our Stampin' Blends and just a little tip if anybody is has the Stampin' Blends. The color is written on the side in the teeny tiniest littlest writing here um, and I find it, <laughs> I find it hard to, to see. Well, not hard to see, but it's just a pain in the butt to have to look to the side when to make sure you've got the color you want. So I made labels for all my, um, Stampin' Blend so that I can work with them a little bit quicker. So I have the light and the dark granny apple green and the light and the dark highland heather. It's really the only purple we have other than blackberry, but blackberry is... Um, a little bit dark like it's super dark and it's not really the same purple um, I kind of wish they would bring out a gorgeous grape but maybe we'll get that in the future so I like to start with the dark I'm gonna use the bullet end and I'm gonna the DSP sort of shadows the edges here really good to sort of help us um, figure out where we should do the blends and if you were doing anything that was um, like artistic they would tell you to follow the way that the Sun would come um, so I kind of like to make this um, left side a little darker than the light than the top side because this I think the shadow of the Sun would create that and then I'm just gonna go in and swirl with the light and blend out those colors so that you get the shadow but you also get the light touches of the or you get the lighter part of the leaf as well. And it happens pretty quickly and it's it's really fun to color and play and and like if you think you need a little bit more dark you can go back in and I just kind of like to do like swipes of it. And I don't even necessarily need to go back in and blend but I think some of the lines are a little harsh. So I might just go in and do a little bit, but I want to not touch the lighter half because I like the lightness of it, uh, if that makes sense. And then, so I'm going to go in with the Dark Highland Heather, and I'm going to shade where it would normally be darker. And I'm just going to do some of these lines out. And then I know that, that it would be darker around this flower because the other one is on top of it kind of thing. I don't know this like I kind of think this flower is called an and I'm gonna probably say it wrong but I think it's an animal anemone anemone so we'll do the first flower and then we'll go do the second flower after and then again I'm just gonna do the shading and the light and the dark are pretty the, close to the same Oh, I missed that leaf, that petal. It's hard to color on a video and not have you guys, and not cover up 
like put your hand in the way kind of thing. I was never that kid who enjoyed coloring as a as a kid. But I do enjoy coloring with the blends and making everything look realistic. Okay, now let's do some dark here on this petal, because this petal would be super dark because of its mostly covered up. But see, the thing with the paper behind is that it totally goes through the... Now I still have... That's the light. So let's go back to the dark and do this other one. Hopefully the noise from the furnace behind me isn't bothering anybody because it's getting louder. <sighs> I try to do the videos when nobody's, when there's not a lot of people in the house so that, you know, nobody decides to take a shower and the hot water heater turns on. But my craft room is also my laundry room, furnace room, so I have to be strategic when I decide to do videos. Most of the time when I'm down here, people leave me alone, but... I'm trying to figure out what I should do for the middle of the flower. Because I kind of think that adding yellow, because this is purple, would be super cool. And normally when I color these flowers, I just pull out my sponge dauber and I add color with my sponge dauber. But I thought that it would be cool to um, color with the markers for this one. There. Hopefully you can see the light to dark sort of thing. I tried to leave it lighter at some of the tips to kind of make the difference. So I'm going to pull out um, the dark daffodil delight. And I'm going to use the brush. Oh no, I'm not. I forgot. That one has colored a lot of rhinestones, so it's a little bit worn out. I'm just going to color it yellow, because I think the yellow would be kind of, kind of keep cool. See, and when you use the alcohol markers, I could go back and I could bring out my light blackberry, because it's a little dark, but it, oh no, I can't. This one's, this one I broke. I forgot. So we use the dark dark bullet end and we can just add a little bit of color here with this and that just sort of changes up the color ever so slightly if I like that but there and then the flowers have a little bit more different depth kind of thing all right so we'll go back to the whole split card thing so here's my white card base and did I not have a piece of DSP cut for this yep I did right here so you can see here where I've cut it shorter than the length because I'm going to fit a little skinny 
sentiment in there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my trimmer in and I'm going to cut an inch off the bottom. And actually, I'm beginning to wonder if, actually, I'm going to take a, a hair more off of it. So it was, I'm just going to take an eighth more because I think I need a scooch more room for my sentiment. And then I'm going to take my inch off. So I probably took an eighth of an inch off there. And I should have probably told you in the beginning that my card is like around the three and three quarters by five and a quarter. So that you have an idea of what size it is. Okay, so I'm going to lay it on here first. Because in other split card um, techniques that I've done, I have used DSP and put it underneath. Um, but today I, I thought I would just do my, put my sentiment sort of in that sort of crack. <laughs> For lack of a better word. <laughs> All right, so we'll get the black, the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink Pad, and we'll ink up our sentiment. And of course, we would ink a net up as well, but, and then I'm gonna put my sentiment off to the left, and I want to try and line it up um, with the edge so that it doesn't go beyond. And then we're gonna go down and up and get it right in that sort of crevice. What will be the crevice anyways? I'm just giving that a clean on my chamois. Okay, and then we're gonna take these and we're gonna flip them over and we're gonna grab our dimensionals and we're gonna put them on to lift the split part up kind of thing. And this piece. And just gives it a little bit of depth and makes it, I think it makes it look cool. Okay, even from left to right, leaving a even border along the bottom. would do before I put my flower because my flower is going to go about here and I'm really disappointed by the fact that I put that blackberry in there and it's still very very red thing with the blends is they take a little bit of time to dry and then you'll be able to see sort of how they look. That's much better. But now this one looks super not dark. And it should be dark because it's the one on the bottom and the sun would be. better. 
Okay, happier with that. So that's gonna be my card, but I thought I would add some interest by pulling in this um, polka dot tool ribbon. And I wanted to bring in my white twine from the snail stuff because I love I love to put this really stringy bow behind flowers. I think it looks really cool. So it's just a simple bow with a big, big loop. Because I want it to poke out on either side. Okay. Not the pink. Pink is good for another day. So I'm going to put my dimensionals on the back of here. Now, there's not much point in doing it sort of towards the middle, except that I kind of need it for my bow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it double high because it's going to end up in the in the sort of canyon, the hole. Just wait. We didn't take the rest of the dimensionals off, and I don't have my ribbon there yet. Oh, hang on. We have to do this in reverse order. So we need our bow on here first. And then we put the... I'm doing trying to do like an X in the middle. And I need it to be a little lower because of where the sentiment opening is. And then I'm thinking I'm going to need a glue dot on top of the ribbon just to make sure it glues. It'll glue through the other things because the tool ribbon has holes in it, but I want to make sure There. That's basically the idea. And then I took the um, frosted and clear epoxy drops and I took some of the clear ones and I colored them with that blackberry um, to get up to get a um, okay now I'm gonna need my take your pick and I think it's over here. I don't know where it was. Oh yeah, it's right here. Okay, because I need to pick up the gems, so I'm going to pick this big one up first. I colored them with the alcohol markers is what I was trying to say. Did it, did it come out clearly? And then I'm going to put you here. But I did it ahead of time because I wanted it to dry. But basically you just take your mar marker and you just color the... Put two over here. And then this one can come over here. And, oh, lost one. And I did not fold the card. That's the card. I probably should trim this a little bit less. And this one hangs way off the card, but I kind of like that. And that's it. That is my 
split front card using the alcohol markers and I also did one earlier sort of as my template and I guess I put two string bows underneath there and this one I use the um, the sponge daubers to sort of color and then when I did my middle I did mango melody and it kind of went into the pink and I like the effect the halo effect of that so I hope you enjoy my card I hope um, that you that you subscribe to my channel and come back and watch other videos and as I mentioned I'm a independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator everything that you've seen me use is available on my store right here and if you're looking for other ideas here's my blog my Facebook page I'm always putting cards up on my page um, so again thanks for watching and I hope you come back subscribe happy stamping